And uh, this is from John, who is in Wauseon. He says he has a white dogwood tree that has not come into bud yet. Mm -hmm. He says the tree is green on the outside, and he's saying that it is green on the inside, too. He can bend some of the branches down. Okay. Everything looks okay there, but uh, it's about four feet tall. He planted it back about the 1st of April this year. Okay. What's going on? Well, in that we don't know whether it was a bare root or bald and burlap plant. I'm going to guess it was bald and burlap or containerized because that's the way most dogwoods are handled. Now, uh, depends on where that plant was stored over winter. There are some chemistry things that we're not going to get into too deeply. But every once in a while, something happens in winter storage, chemically, in the air, that stops a plant from uh, opening bud. And, and there's lots of stories on this, but what it boils down to is this is a delay. It's not a kill. And I would say it's highly unusual to be into this time of year still facing this problem, but it's still possible. I'm going to recommend, since this is only a four-footer, that he put four stakes in the ground and drop a great big garbage bag over it, right down over the top of the whole plant. It'll be dark. That's fine, because we're only talking two or three days here. It will be coming either to the ground or very darn close to the ground. I want him to wet the soil under the plant. Um, Since it's okay to water heavily, and we're going to do this all in a three-day period, have him, or I'm going to suggest that he would water heavily. Now, hopefully then the evaporation, et cetera, during the day would fill this bag inside with a high vapor content. Bad for diseases, but now we're trying to get the buds to break. And it's going to be what I simply call sweating a plant. Um, again, a lot of details in the nursery world on this, but it boils down to trying to not cook the plant. And, and if it comes a real hot, sunny day, and this happens to be in the sun, which is not good for dogwoods anyhow, he may need to take the bag loose during the heat of that afternoon, put it back on by, oh, after dinner, and go overnight, and then up till maybe the hot part of the day to the next day. And, and literally cause the humidity to build up around this plant to about as high as possible. Um, not not literally cooking it, and that's why he may have to take it off. But doing that for two or three days may cause these buds to swell and open, and his dogwood could come on along. Now, it's pretty late in the year. It's worth a try. Uh, otherwise, it's a matter of what color do you want to buy for the next plant. <laughs> it's right. Not what <laughs> but when he's talking about it being limber, being green inside, I'm inclined to think it's one of these bud retardation types of things, more than death itself, and worthy of a try. So um, you can't do that with a big tree, but for a little tree, let's have him try that one time. Do dogwoods like acidic soil? Yes. Dogwoods absolutely mandate acidic soil. Now, that is the common dogwood, the one he's talking about. The Coosa dogwood has just recently flowered, and the, the, well, we've talked in the very early spring about the Cornelian cherry dogwood, and then lots of the shrub forms of dogwood do not mandate acid soil. But the common, beautiful, big, white-flowered, pink-flowered, and red-flowered types that you find in nature and or at the garden centers are absolutely a mandate of acid soil and exceedingly well-drained in good high organic. Without that, you might as well buy a different kind of plant. Let's talk a little bit about trees. So you're okay. talking about trees. Uh, you, you've been looking around, and you've been I looking up. I have been looking up and down. I was at a property just very recently where there are many tree problems. The lady had been advised by three different people. Some said cut them down or cut this one down, do this, do that, the next thing. She was absolutely confused, and I can appreciate why. I gave her more confusion but reasons for thought. Um a tree in her front yard had been topped at one point in time, either by Mother Nature being a big fat crow landing up there and breaking the top out or an ice load or somebody intentionally cut it out. It has a dog leg in it. And, and then, unfortunately, it's not just a, a, a step, step aside and on up. It's a three-part branching. Bad, bad crotch. Mm-hmm. The tree can live on. It is highly subject, though, because it is a tulip poplar, tulip tree. Uh, it is highly subject to breaking. So I've told her that every three to five years, she needs to have someone come in, and I'm going to carefully now state, reduce the top of that plant. Not top it, but cut back to lateral branches, do the job right. There's many good terms for it, but absolutely no topping. Now, we move on from there. She has a beautiful four-stem magnolia. It's branched just 18 inches above the ground. Each branch is approaching 8, 9, and 10 inches in diameter. Mm -hmm. They extend out and down. The tree is magnificent. Until the next ice load come fall, yeah. or until a wind twist like Ike from last year, fortunately it'll live through Ike. She has the option on that tree to just wait and let nature take its course. 
Right now, the branches are from probably a height of 18 feet down to touching the ground. It's absolutely beautiful, but a liability to itself. I gave her the option of having the tree cabled so that it would be less apt to break apart or just wait and see. We walked on around, and her house is a, is a walkout basement, and other trees have now, in 35 years, gotten some size to them. They are, unfortunately, two of them silver maples, very, very high-rooted. The roots are bigger than my thigh. They're, well, it's almost impossible to mow that area and make it look good anyhow. I told her that she can not take off all the roots. She already knew that, fortunately, and, and stopped one fellow from doing that. He's going to bring in a stump grinder and take them all off. Whoa, mm. that tree has to be anchored in the ground. To take them all off is desperately bad. However, a branch can be removed from a tree and not hurt it. A root can usually be removed from a tree and not hurt it. But it's one or a very small percentage of the roots any one year. Then we come to the next thing, and that is there was one of the trees that had been at the bottom of the hill. Silt had moved down this hill long enough to cover it up. It was going in the ground like a post. I couldn't tell if there was a good root flare or not. Mm -hmm. The tree at the top of the hill was, was making it almost impossible. So what I suggested to her is that this fall, roughly August 15th, an awkward time in terms of vacations and all, but a mandate because the leaves will be coming down in September and October. That is out of the trees. You want to put on no more than three inches. That would partially cover the big roots that are sticking up. Put on three inches of soil, level it out, plant grass seed, and get some grass going to be mowed right at the time the new leaves start to come down. She can blow them off without raking and not tearing up the new grass and resolve this part of the problem. Next year, she can add another three inches and then have to stop. Then we come to a tulip tree again. Big, beautiful tree when you stand back and look at it. Two tops, bad, narrow crotch, but that was at the low level. That was at 12 feet. On up at about 18 feet, there were two branches about 12 or 14 inches in diameter. The crack between them was down seven oh. feet, just waiting for the next wind to come down and hurt somebody. So uh, those are the things we need to look up and take care of as calling a good arborist, having them come in for a consult, and then doing as much as you can afford in any one time. Keep your trees in shape a little bit at a time, just like brushing your teeth. Do it every day.